What's happening people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, and I do hope you are doing so, so well. And welcome to today's video, which is a sort of assessment to Frank Lampard's start to the Premier League season in his new job as Chelsea manager. Probably quite a sobering start for Frank Lampard and Chelsea fans in terms of the results, but you know what? It's a really interesting thing to assess, or certainly if you look at the performances and what's going on, and we're gonna get into that in today's video, and you know what? It's not all negatives. Before we do get into today's video, I do wanna request that you subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell notifications icon because you know what guys, I upload every single day and I want you lot to keep up with the content. And if you want to help me out, please do like this video. Anyway, so the international break is here. Chelsea have played four games. I always feel like the international break comes far, far too early. Although saying that, it's probably come at a good time for Chelsea, considering how things are going. Right, so Chelsea have five points out of a possible 12. And that's not good enough. Fair enough, Chelsea can lose to Manchester United away at Old Trafford, considering they've got a coach that's been there for a while. They've bought, you know, they've spent a decent amount of money in the transfer window, and, you know, it's at Old Trafford, whatever. Maybe just forget it was 4 0. To be fair, that didn't seem like a 4 0 game, but, you know, whatever. Chelsea at home versus Leicester, that was a really interesting one. I feel like Chelsea should have won that game. They came out in the first 20 minutes, they absolutely went blitzkrieg on Leicester and looked like prime Pep Guardiola's Barcelona in 2008. Then they burnt out, let Leicester back into the game and bleh, won all. The Norwich game was a little bit more exciting and this was a bit more like it because it was always going to be a difficult game away at Carrow Road considering how both teams play and considering Chelsea's not yet a settled side, more on that later. So a 3-2 win away with a bit more of a professional performance in the second half was a positive result for Chelsea and obviously Tammy Abraham getting his brace you know there was good vibes there and a decent Mason Mount goal but there were telling negative signs throughout these three games and Chelsea have just drawn 2-2 to Sheffield United at home and residual problems from the previous games maybe not so much Norwich about the second half being an issue came back to haunt Frank Lampard. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about his problems, what's been going on, how can he improve it, and what's been going right. First off, I wanna preface what I'm about to say with something that I found quite interesting, or find quite interesting. That makes more sense. So before the season started, everyone was speculating how Frank Lampard would do. Is he the right man for the job? Has he got enough experience? Who's he gonna play? He's got a transfer ban. There's no Ed and Hazard. How the hell are they gonna do anything? But the main concern that everyone was speculating would be the problem was how are Chelsea gonna create chances and score goals? Where are the goals gonna come from? There's no goals. Almost ironically, that kind of seems like that might not be the problem. The way Frank Lampard coaches, he wants all his midfielders to score, which is, you know, shot horror, right? Frank Lampard teaches midfielders to score goals. Obviously, Mason Mount's got a couple and you'd expect him to score a few more. And the way he's kind of coaching people like Mateo Kovacic to run into the box and get himself into scoring up chances, which he has been. I know it's Mateo Kovacic and He's, <laughs> you don't bank on him to score goals. But the way Frank Lampard is coaching, you do expect goals to come from that midfield. You do think Pedro will score a few throughout the season. We've seen Pulisic can finish. We've, he's already got a couple assists, which is good in the opening four games, but he does need to get a couple of goals as well. I feel like that will come. I'm quite confident hudson Adoy will score a few goals when he's reintroduced to the team as well. The known quantity Olivier Giroud will score the odd goal because we've seen him score goals. I mean, top scorer in Europa League last season. He can score a few in the Premier League. He just, and like I said, a known quantity. We'll know we'll get a few. The jury is out on Batshuayi and there's rumours that Lampard doesn't fancy him. I did a video on it a couple of days ago. Check it out. But what is positive, Tammy Abraham does have four goals already. Granted, this came in two games, uh, two braces against what were promoted championship teams, but they were good goals. Two of them against Norwich were sort of probably like world-class striker-esque goals. You know, one outside the box, one a half volley. And the two against Sheffield were proper sniffers goals, poachers goals, which Chelsea desperately needed. So what I'm alluding to here 
is with Eden Hazard going, people said, oh, where are the chances going to be created? Who's going to be scoring the goals? Almost ironically, I don't think that's the problem. I think Chelsea are going to score goals. Chelsea have been creating loads of chances since the beginning of the season, so... I think neither of those things are going to be a problem. So where does that leave us? Defence. Yeah, Chelsea have been conceding far too many goals. That seems to be the problem, right? So you look at the personnel, and it's difficult because Chelsea don't have bad players. From the bottom to the top of the pitch, people can like debate and argue all they want where Chelsea should invest loads of money. But the fact is, Chelsea have four good centre-backs. People can go in on Kurt Zuma and say, you know, he's got problems, but he's performed very well for Everton at a decent level. He's a good centre-back. Tomori was Derby's player of the season last season. He's a very good young centre-back. Christensen's got loads of experience. You know, Guardiola was in his ear at one point a couple of seasons ago. Very, very good centre-back. And the returning Antonio Rudiger, very, very good centre-back. Chelsea have obviously the flawed Marcus Alonso and left-back, but they've also got Emerson, who's been having, you know, out of the four games, he's arguably Chelsea's most consistent player in terms of decent performances he's been good defensively he's been good offensively he's been good in possession he's a good dribbler he's good at combinations and he pops off shots he's been actually pumping out like excellent stats so one of Chelsea's probably best performers right so there is an argument at right back Chelsea have a problem in Aspilicueta good one-on-one -on -one defender good right centre back but in the I've said it before and I'll say it again he's not in the mould of the modern day dynamic fullback he's 30 now he is a, a leader i mean he does bleed blue he wants to play for chelsea chelsea fans love him he can do the odd good defensive action and he's not great going forward even if he's done the odd good cutback or cross lately it's just not good enough not enough from him and sadly for as if you look at the numbers of the amount of times he concedes possession to the opposition now they're like radical numbers, it's really becoming a problem. So for me, if I had to pick out a problem position, it would be at right back with Cesar as Pulaqueta. Frank Lampard has actually already alluded to how big Reese James could be for this Chelsea side, and with these performances from Aspi, it looks like that is more and more sort of prevalent issue. But generally, Chelsea's personnel isn't bad. They're completely flush in midfield. Something that I've said before, I think Chelsea have got the second best midfield options in the league only behind Manchester City. If everyone's fit, I mean. So I don't think it's a personnel issue really. So Chelsea can create chances. Chelsea can score goals. Chelsea have generally got good defenders. Chelsea have got amazing midfielders. So what's the problem? Do we blame Frank Lampard? Well, the thing is with Lampard coming to Chelsea, it's mainly positive. He's my favourite Chelsea player of all time and there's a very strong argument he's the greatest ever Chelsea player of all time. Now I know that shouldn't mean anything as a coach but I'm just putting it out there because it might mean something. But the way he handles himself and his approach and his application to management, he knows what it means to be Chelsea. He knows Chelsea players have to perform. He wants to hammer into the players, if you're here you have to really want to play for Chelsea. Lovely stuff. That's the kind of thing as a fan you want to hear your coach say and if he's a club legend like Frank Lampard, you believe him. He's young, he's intelligent, he hasn't got an inflated ego so therefore he's willing to adapt and evolve with the game and learn. He knows he's not the best coach of all time and he's willing to consult his peers like Joe Edwards, Jody Morris, you know, sit at the board table with Petr Cech and talk about, you know, evolution of the club, moving forward, transfers. So there's a collective there. He's not going to shut himself off like Conte or Jose and, you know, isolate himself and cause any form of toxicity in the club. So huge amounts of positives for Frank Lampard, but how does he apply his management on the pitch? Obviously, he wants to play young players. I mean, that's obvious. He's Chelsea's youngest ever team he fielded in the Premier League at Sheffield. He himself, I think, is getting a little bit bored of the, oh, you play the youth, you play the youth questions. But the fact is, he wants to play the youth. He wants a young, dynamic team. He wants players that have come through the academy that knows what it means to play for Chelsea, that dream of playing for Chelsea, because he wants that desire from his players. And in terms of style, how he wants them to play, he wants expressive football, fast, dynamic, direct football, quick combinations. He likes to commit a lot of players forward. 
which kind of can cause problems. So Chelsea are creating a lot of scoring chances and scoring opportunities, but it seems like high risk football. That did look like it got a little bit better with leaving less space between the midfield and defensive line with perhaps the defenders playing a higher line to join the midfield more, perhaps like playing off side trap more or generally be set up to be less vulnerable on the counter attack. That had looked like it had improved over the first four games this season in the Premier League. So that's good. But two problems remain and they are the biggest problems for Frank Lampard. The first problem is set piece defending. Now sadly, this is an issue that's followed Frank from Derby County. It's not something new and exclusive to this Chelsea side. He seems to have a problem coaching defending set pieces, which is peculiar because usually you have specialist coaches that help you know, the first team coach with this sort of thing. Maybe it's the same bad backroom staff that aren't helping or doing the right thing for set pieces, I don't know. The fact is he sort of deploys some form of zonal marking which doesn't seem to be doing well and Chelsea are often conceding goals from set pieces. But this should be something that could be coached out of the sides. I mean, that should be better over time, hopefully. And the second thing is a little bit more intangible, something a bit more difficult to quantify, and that is attention or concentration lapses, man. Chelsea have conceded immediately in the second half in a couple of games, and the Super Cup certainly to Mane. They did it again against Sheffield in the first minute. Within seconds, they concede a goal. Other than the Norwich game, Chelsea have been poor in second half. They've looked really good in the first half, and even if it's not like an energy, more like energy levels dropping in the second half, it's concentration levels dropping in the second half. Now, just as a sort of speculative Chelsea fan, I would assume that Frank Lampard gives really rousing, inspirational halftime talks, because, you know, he captained Chelsea, he's that kind of, like, erudite, eloquent, but yet passionate player. You'd feel like he'd do everything to raise the player's spirits. But there seems to be some residual sorry halftime talks where Chelsea had a big problem last season in the second half. Although Chelsea had a bit more of a professional performance against Norwich away where they scored the winning goal and they slowed the game down, they did the opposite against Sheffield and all generally throughout the opening games of the season, they've had that problem. So I don't know what the answer is to that. That's surely just got to be coaching. The two biggest problems for Frank Lampard's Chelsea are set piece defending and drop, you know, attention dropping, concentration dropping, because if you can defend well in big parts of the game, you should be able to defend well in 90 minutes. The positive to all this is those two negative elements or team attributes are things that should be able to be coached out of the team via conventional coaching methods. This isn't some sort of radical idealistic philosophy from a new coach that he's trying to implement something really difficult. This is something that Sam Allardyce, Sean Dyche could help the team out if they spent, you know, a month with the squad. Do you know what I mean? So really guys, we should take that as a positive. This is stuff that can be improved upon. In terms of creating chances and scoring goals and players being passionate, wanting to play for Chelsea again, and you know, just there being a general good vibe Vibe, that all seems to be there and in Frank Lampard there's a coach that doesn't have a sort of deflective ego I think he's willing to self-assess and address the problems at Chelsea so again positive the truth is though guys it's a results based game and Chelsea have started really really badly it's probably helpful that United have started really really badly as well but Chelsea and Frank Lampard will be wanting to look at themselves. What do you think guys? How do you think the start's been for the first four games as we go into the international break? Of course it's been disappointing, but can you see the positives like I can? Do you think Frank will be given the season regardless? Just give me your thoughts, get down in the comments below. Other than that guys, please do like the video if you've enjoyed the content and why not subscribe if you're new because I'm always uploading and you know, you might enjoy it. But that's it from me today guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm out, enjoy the football, I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.